So we're a few weeks into the shutdown now. Now, uh, when the when the shutdown started, all the all the non-essential things uh, closed down, and uh, part of what was determined to be non-essential were a lot of businesses that have a lot of uh, a lot of touch involved. So uh, hairdressers and nail salons and and, and a lot of those uh, a lot of those kinds of places that have a lot of close contact, uh, especially with uh, you know that that slight possibility of blood, right? So uh, so certainly haircuts, tattoo parlors, all that stuff, been shut down for a while. Now when when this happened, I was already overdue for a haircut. Uh, I I tend to not. I don't really go out and get haircuts very often. It's not high on my list of priorities. So I, I was already pretty shaggy when this whole thing started. And I was getting even worse. So yesterday about lunchtime, I went out in the driveway with uh, with Kyungsoo. And Kyungsoo gave me a haircut. Now, I mean, she's not a professional, but she did not bad. Although, uh, you know, if I have to be completely honest about it, I I, I think I look like I just got out of prison or something. So this will be forever known as my my prison haircut because I'm a prisoner in my home and and uh, just because I'm looking that way. But anyway, I, I got the opportunity to go and uh, show off my new haircut and uh, and kind of scare a bunch of people, which was sort of fun. Um, Jim Toon dropped by to see me in the morning. Now he's uh, he's a uh, and I don't want to say an area pastor. He's a pastor. He lives in the area. Uh, but his church is actually out of town and, and a fair distance away. It's uh, it's either Brampton or Burlington. I, I can't remember which. There are too many cities around here that start with B, so I, I have a hard time keeping them straight. But anyway, he lives locally, uh, but he lives out of town, and he, he's got a bit of property. So he, he grows quite a few things, and he's got uh, chickens. So he, he brought a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of eggs. He had sent me an email and said, listen, I've, I've got this glut of eggs. Can you help me out? Do you have some folks that would take them? So he came over and, and dropped them off. And uh, so then in the in the afternoon, once the rain stopped, uh, Kyung Soo and I and, and and my new haircut went out, and we visited uh, a whole bunch of people. We had uh, uh, quite a few driveway visits. Of course, we didn't go in, but you know we were able to uh, stand on uh, on the uh, front steps and and have some conversations with folks. And I, I felt a little bit like the Easter Bunny. You know, uh, springtime, spreading out these, you know, the, these little little orbs of fertility, right? That's essentially what they are. It's the promise of new life. So I thank Jim for uh, for giving me that opportunity because uh, had I not had something to drop off, I, I wouldn't have actually seen these people. I, I've been trying to make phone calls, um, but I, I've also been cognizant of the fact that you know we want to minimize our actual physical contact. So I, I'm not uh, I'm not actually seeing people face to face. And I, I find I, I think a little while ago I had mentioned that I don't really like the telephone because uh, it's a it's a limited form of communication. You get the voice, but you, you don't get the um, the the body language. You don't get to see people's faces. And uh, as I as I saw a number of faces yesterday, and the folks that I visited, I I intentionally went to see people who are on their own, so people who don't have a, a spouse or or kids or um, that. Kind of maybe really need a little bit of contact, and I can see that that this is really taking its toll. That people are having quite a hard time, and it's no wonder, you know, because we're we're created to be social beings. Like right from the beginning, God created Adam, and He looked at him. And he said, "It just won't do for this guy to be on his own. It's not healthy." Um. <clears throat> In the in the Psalms, uh, I believe twenty seven says, uh, uh, "As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another." And as we rub up against each other, we we actually do each other good, uh, despite the fact that we tend to aggravate each other. So those of us who are in this lockdown, uh, you know, with kids and spouses, maybe maybe we would like a couple of days of that being alone. Um, but being alone, you know, at at best. We stagnate. So the the best that we can hope for is simply that we don't get worse when we're isolated all the time. And I, I don't mean to suggest that living on your own is somehow wrong, but when we live on our own, usually we still have contact. We still have community of people that we see throughout the day and different clubs and 
events and, and friends that we uh, that we're with. And when all that's taken away, the best we can hope for is just to just to kind of hold that status quo until things get back to normal. And, and at worst, um, you know, we start to fall apart. And, and uh, some of the people that I know, they're they're suffering loss. They're they're already in a little bit of a, a fragile state, uh, having a little bit of a tough time. And this uh, being alone for an extended period of time is certainly not good. Um, I got a message from uh, from my mom yesterday. My my granddad's not doing well. He's uh, he, he's 102, uh, and, and they're on full lockdown in in Park and, uh, Parkwood. And so he's not uh, he, he's not able to um, do what he normally does. Normally, my mom and dad stop up uh, almost every day. They they stop and see him. He he also normally takes meals together. You know he's got his his friends that he hangs out with, so they they share meal times together and they sit in the hallway and chat. And he's not able to do any of that anymore. And uh, what what makes it worse is that as he's uh, getting older, I mean he's he's still pretty clear, but his memory is not what it used to be. Uh, and, and there's only so many times a day, you know, that he can be told we're in lockdown and, and we have to do this for a while and we don't know how long it's going to last. And uh, it's it's problematic. It's problematic. It, it, it weighs on my heart, you know, for granddad, certainly uh, for other people in the congregation who I know and love. And there's a lot of people out there who I simply don't know who are also suffering. One of my uh, one of my friends. Um, there's a, a young man who's uh, who's homeless that I uh, I talk to quite a bit, and I remember one conversation that we had that uh, really moved me because I, I'd always thought this, but then he he really kind of put it into words. He he said the uh, the worst thing about being homeless is not it's not so much the not having security and and all that. I mean that certainly is tough. It takes its toll, but he, he said the worst is actually the the lack of human contact. That when when people see him, they they cross to the other side of the street, and nobody wants to even say hi to him or greet him. And, and uh, uh, you know, it kind of really broke my heart as we were having that conversation. So I, I guess throughout this this lockdown, um, it's an opportunity for many of us who maybe hadn't really thought about that isolation bit. Maybe we've uh, we've just been so busy with our families and with other things that we, we don't really consider it. And I, I hope we, we begin to seriously consider it more um, for the, uh, you know, certainly the, the elderly who are, who are uh, housebound due to uh, health reasons, but also for the, for the homeless, for any of those people who, for one reason or another, are living at the edge of society. We we certainly see that uh, the, these are the very people that Jesus reached out to. So the the lepers, of course, come to mind. You know, th those are the people who are not allowed to be uh, close to anybody else. They're literally not allowed to physically approach people because they were afraid of the disease. Um, but also, you know, the uh, the the woman with the twelve year of uh, of bleeding. Jesus always seems to reach out to those people who are otherwise on the margins, and he brings them in. And this this is part of what forgiveness and healing and wholeness is. It's not just about saying your sins are okay. I'm I'm going to overlook your shortcomings. It it's about restoring people to a place in community and in culture, because everybody needs a place. And everybody does have a place. So when we uh, when we're turned loose to actually visit people freely, I, I, I hope that we actually start to keep that in mind a little bit more. I, I know certainly I'm learning and growing through this. I'll leave you with that this morning. Peace be with you.